Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Hey y'all. And to a much anticipated reaction video from a sugar song, Clockworks. More specifically, Tomas's drumming of the song Clockworks, which has been highly requested over the past few Meshuggah videos that I've done uh, reactions to. I apologize for it taking so long to get around to this. Uh, life is throwing a few curves at me that's trying to test me. And um, I've just been busy with other priorities that I've had to take care of, as I pointed out in my community post. So if you're still sticking around the channel, I I am hugely thankful to you for your patience and for your continued support. And I'm going to continue to try to be attentive to the things that you all want me to see. Uh, so don't think I've given up. It's just um, things are a little strained for me on my end. But I'm going to do the best that I can. So this song, um, I've purposely avoided giving it a listen on Spotify because I knew that I was going to need to do a reaction video to this song. But I have been listening to other songs by Meshuggah. Um, but when this one pops up, I just kind of try to avoid it because I want an organic take on the song. So what I've been able to learn from you all in comments from like my previous Meshuggah videos is that the band typically structures their songs in 4-4, but it's their masterful use of polyrhythmic and polymetric techniques that almost give the songs a sense that they're playing in, in like various time signatures sometimes even switching time signatures you know from one section to another when that necessarily might not be the case it's just listening to it at face value and you're trying if you're trying to count along with it you'll think that you're hearing a lot of odd time signatures so with that in mind i'm going to focus more on the patterns that i'm hearing from tomas and look at more of like his playing technique from a drummer side of things because I am a drummer myself. Well, that's a mighty tall order. For a much more in-depth like technical breakdown of like Meshuggah's songs, I believe a few of you recommended um, Yogev's Gabne's channel. Uh, I'll put a link in the description. But from what you guys were telling me, he actually dissects these songs and breaks them down from a musical theory standpoint in a really really well done way so i'll refer to stuff like that to him but there will be a link in the description to his channel so with that introduction out of the way i'm just going to do my normal disclaimer the link to the original video will be in the description if you don't want to see my face or hear me talk or anything like that for this reaction video so with all that foundation laid Let's go ahead and check out this drumming playthrough. This first section, <laughs> there's so much, there's so much happening in this first section already. The song ain't even got going yet. If you take, take note of the insane amount of ghost notes that Tomas is playing, uh, he's got more ghost notes in the song already than some songs go when they just have their standard backbeat for the snare going. Um, He's got the hi-hat keeping time with uh, with eighth notes if you're just counting one, two, three, four, and he's doing eighth notes on a hi-hat, so one and two and three and four and. In addition to the fact that I can kind of hear like a pattern-like structure in this first section. It's like um, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, something similar to like that. So if that's the foundation for this song, I'm going to keep that in mind to kind of help help me keep track of like what's happening with the song. Yeah, within just a few seconds, we're already having to pause and take a look at stuff. So let's go back real quick. Jeez. 
Jeez. Okay. Um, every time the uh, the guitarist and, and the, uh, the the bass started uh, the beginning of one of the one, two, three, one, two, one, two, like that type of pattern, every time they started that, Tomas made sure to accent that with um, with hits on the crash cymbal. It happened every time. It was literally right in line with the guitar and the uh, and the bass riffs. So it gives a sense of musical cohesiveness with him doing that, despite just how almost seemingly erratic the snare drum and the ghost note patterns were. Uh, I can see that there's a lot happening, but it's clear that there's a reason for everything that Tomas is playing, and it's placed exactly where it needs to be for a reason. So let's continue. Looks like we're on to the next section now. Okay, so uh, Tomas on the on the floor, Tom, he actually is keeping with the whole uh, three and two pattern that I mentioned earlier. One, two. If you if you look at like how he's hitting it, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one. Two, it's if you look at it like that, you can almost keep track of like each individual like section within the measure that the band is playing because he's actually mirroring that on the floor tom. It's almost like the snare the snare has its own lane for the groove that it's doing, but he's using his other sound sources to like identify the the structure of the section so to speak if, if that makes any sense. Not to mention the amount of limb independence required to do this is absolutely high level and absolutely insane not to mention just keeping track of the patterns and the changes all together Okay, so this is this is gonna sound kind of crazy for me to say, but the yeah, this is gonna sound crazy, but it, again, just going by what I'm hearing for the verse section, the musicianship behind it with the uh, with the strings and the drums compared to that first section is actually much more subdued to give room for the vocals. Now, you know what, subdued from a sugar standards. So Tomas, he basically was keeping the same kind of foundational structure going that he was in the earlier section. Um, instead of counting eighth notes on the hi-hat with his foot like he was doing for the left hi-hat, he's instead doing um, just straight quarter, a quarter note pulse on his more open, sloshier hi-hats on the right. So just one, two, three, four, one, two. Okay, simple enough, right? The snare work on the other hand, is doing what he was doing with the toms in the previous section and mirroring that one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, which also happens to mirror the guitar parts. So like his fir the first section that he did seemed like it was heavily ghost note oriented. Here, the snare drum is much more backbeat focused, even though uh, he's playing a lot of hits on the snare drum. They're very loud. They're all consistent with their velocity or their the intensity of the strike. So he, there's no ghost notes about it. He's cl he's clearly wanting to let the listener hear exactly what the structure of this section is on the snare, while keeping a steady driving pattern going by playing sixteenth sixteenth notes on the bass drums. So it keeps a just a steady chug going and keeps the intensity going while also still giving the vocals room time to give the message out. The next Meshuggah video that I do, um, if I 
just take a listen to the song as a whole and not so focused on the drumming, I'm actually going to deep dive into the lyrics for that. But for the focus and the purpose of this video, the, the main goal is to see what Tomas is doing for the drumming. Okay, that part um, it sounded a little different than the um, than the first verse section. Not necessarily because of the the guitar riffs rhythmically changed. Um, it was more so that there was a little more a little more punch accentuation uh, with the riffs because Tomas was mirroring the ending tag to the one two three one two three one two one. Two. He was mirroring that with uh what he was doing on the kicks it wasn't it was no longer just a straight like 16th note one and a two and a three it was no longer that is one and a two and a one and one and a two and a one and a two and a three and a one and a two like something like that uh, i don't i don't know the exact riff but you get what i'm saying he he was still matching the riff closely except he was doing it with his feet while still continuing to accent the beginning of each individual uh pattern with hits on the cymbal Love that solo section structurally it was um it wasn't as complex as the previous parts I'm, I'm, i mean that as far as the foundation for the song structure not that what they're playing isn't still complex it's just compared to the other sections there was more of a um basic foundation if that makes sense uh tomas was continuing to use the kick drum to uh, to mirror and match the rhythm guitarist while keeping a steady pulse on the hi-hat. Um, and he had more of an even backbeat groove going with the snare drum, which is good because it allows the uh, the lead guitar soloist some time to, not some time, but like some room to kind of do whatever he wants to do without the other musicians taking away from uh, from his spotlight, so to speak. Man, now this is a buildup if I've ever heard one. I know that something's going to, I don't know what's going to happen, but something's going to happen in this next section because you can clearly tell that they're gearing up for something here. Mm -hmm. Great. Let me go prepare my something oil then.
Also, real quick, um, he's playing kind of like the, if we, again, if we think of it like threes, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. He's keeping that going um, in a very consistent kind of kind of way. It almost really does kind of lend itself well to the atmosphere of building something up because there's not a lot of change in it. You know, it's very consistent. So, you know, something is going to happen that sonically is going to jar you a little bit because of how um, focused and routine, so to speak, that this section is. It, it's it's very, very consistent with how it sounds. My bad, guys. I um, I kind of got caught up in, in that change right there. Um, I haven't really been paying attention to what Tomas was playing. Let me let me go back. Sorry, music kind of got to me for a second. Okay, that part was really cool sounding. Um, not to mention, these riffs, they sound really good. Um, there's something about, there's something about like the aggression behind them that, quite frankly, it's very pleasing to the ears. So, this section, um, the ghost notes, what, what, what they look like to me were not really stylistically designed to um, accent anything in particular in the section. They seem like they were more traditional ghost notes in the sense that they're there to just kind of add flavor and fill the space a little bit behind the backbeat. However, the backbeat itself, the main snare hit, was specifically um, put where it is in the measure to accent the, um, the specific changes of the guitar riffs Whenever it went from the one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, you notice that the snare intensity um, accented those. Also, for that, uh, he went to a 16th note pattern on the double bass. So all it did was just add a whole bunch of drive um, for that section before going back to the one, two, three, 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 one, two. That's a very. Um, it's a very simple structure to, to somewhat follow to the listener uh, because that section is clearly designed to have people, you know, you know, head banging and in a way where they can understand, OK, this is where the pulse is. You don't need to be um, inclined in musical theory to understand how to kind of get into it rhythmically. So that's uh, props to them for the musicianship behind that. Sorry for pausing again. Um, I was going to try to wait until this section was over before I did that, but I have to point this out. So while this section does sound somewhat similar to the previous section, Tomas is playing one main thing differently. For that, for the last run of twos, uh, dun, 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 instead of doing a straight 
16th note double bass pattern, he's alternating between a kick and snare. Kick, snare, kick, snare, kick, snare, kick, snare, instead of one e and a two e and on the kick, and then just using the snare to accent the first start of each of the twos. Uh, so it sounds similar at first, and you might not catch it immediately, but if you really listen, you'll be like, oh, wait a minute. Uh, this is a little different. Not to mention playing the china. Um, the china symbol offers a lot more brashiness to this section too, which in a very subtle way can um, can change the sonic palette, so to speak, of the of this particular section versus the previous one. So it's little things like that 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 drive away some of the similarities to the previous section, even though they could casually sound like they're the same. Okay, notice how um, again the 16th double bass for the for the the threes section of it one two three one two three one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and one dun 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 dun. So he basically just took the previous section before and just kind of kind of flipped it a little bit of uh, you know flipped it and reversed it a little bit. Flip it and reverse it. Also notice that when he does an end of the phrase fill every hit that he does on the toms, no matter how he's playing the pattern exactly, still fits the exact same threes or twos kind of structure. It still does, you know. Like, it's... this. I can see why the song is called Clockworks. Despite how chaotic it seems at first, everything is placed exactly where it needs to be. And the only, differ the only differences that occur are mainly just in the sound sources. Again, this is from Tomas's drumming standpoint, but the only differences that occur are which sound sources are hit to accent which parts. So it keeps the structure the same, but yet the variations still follow the, the blueprint and the foundation of the song, if that makes, an, if that makes any sense. I'm really trying like for, to kind of word everything you know, appropriately so that it's easy to understand, because uh, there is a lot happening, you know, but it all, it all kind of starts to make sense if you really, really just kind of listen and kind of lock into what's happening. Okay, for that last part, um, he was basically still keeping the the threes and the twos going, but instead of the focus of it being on the snare with a strong backbeat and then filling it with the ghost notes, uh, he was breaking it up between the rack tom and the floor tom. Uh, so he still kept the same pattern going. Man, this song is absolute fire. And uh, from what I've read, this song was actually wrote by Tomas? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong on that, but I believe he had a huge hand and at least had a, a big part in the songwriting process. Um, very fitting, though, considering just his abilities as a drummer in general. Man, so again, apologies for just not getting around to this. Uh, this was a great this is a great playthrough. Give me uh, give me some more suggestions. And while this may not have been like the super technical breakdown that some of you might have been expecting, 
um, I wanted to just kind of give a layman's terms kind of um, breakdown of things as I heard it and as I observed from Tomas's drumming. So if you guys enjoyed that and at least appreciated uh, the little bit of insight that I could offer on this video, please don't hesitate to like, uh, subscribe if you haven't already, um, you know, and things of that nature. So yeah, uh, but next I'm going to be working on the, um, the drum cover for Black Gold by Monument of a Memory. They actually challenged me, so to speak, to see if I could play that. So uh, I've got most of it worked out. But I haven't been able to practice as much as I would have hoped for this past week or so. But um, I'm still kind of ironing it out. But I think I've I think I've got it. So uh, stay tuned for that coming up next. And I haven't forgotten about previous uh, recommendations as well. I've got a long list still. Uh, so I'm going to go back to some stuff that people have recommended to me from a while ago and see what I need to go ahead and catch up on with my backlog for that. So again, guys, if you made it to the end of the video... Thank you so much, and I appreciate you all. Thank you all for the support, and I will catch you all in the next video. Stay tuned.